Hey, this is pretty sweet. Check this out. This is a Western hemlock, Arsuga heterophylla. And if you flip the leaves over, you'll see on the underside of the leaves, there are these tiny little white rows. And if you look even close, you'll see that these tiny little white rows are made up of even tinier little pores called stomata. Now, stomata allow for water to evaporate from the leaf through a process called transpiration, something that happens in all plant leaves. Though some water is lost in that process, that evaporation creates a negative pressure grating within the tree that pulls water up from the roots to its leaves, sort of like a big straw, which keeps water flowing to the chloroplasts in the leaves, which conduct photosynthesis, where they draw in molecules of CO2 through that same stomata, which are broken down with the energy from the sun, along with that water to create sugars, which the tree stores, releasing the leftover oxygen. It's basically how trees both eat and breathe, and they can open and close their stomata in response to different environmental factors. During drought or extreme heat, for example, they'll close them to reduce water loss, but with no water flowing to the chloroplast, they're no longer able to photosynthesize and grow. So they're basically in a stress response, holding their breath and starving during hot summer droughts, something which anthropogenic climate change is making much more frequent and severe. Many species like Western red cedar, a theopicata here, simply can't endure those long stressful periods of drought and are beginning to die out, signaling the beginning of what could potentially be a catastrophic loss of biodiversity as so many other critters depend on these trees. So understanding plant biology and how they're impacted by these changes underscores the importance of creating healthy functioning ecosystems that are able to endure and survive the changes that are coming our way. Pretty neat.